Hello everyone and welcome to this session from Library Plus on how to create reading lists for your modules in Blackboard. Uh, I'm Christine Strachan, Information Services Librarian at Fraserburgh Campus. So I'm just going to be giving a very short demonstration on how to create your reading list in Blackboard. I'll show you how to add library resources to the reading lists and uh, finally uh, just talk a little bit about library support and how we can assist you in finding appropriate resources to put on your reading list. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen with you and start the demonstration. So Okay. So I'm in my course area in Blackboard. Now, how, where you put your reading list will entirely depend on how you have your course set up. So if you have, for example, you might have your module split up into different weeks like this, week one, week two, week three. So you could um, create a reading list, a weekly reading list for each of those uh, modules. Or you might just want to put in a sort of generic course reading list with um, required reading for the course. So it's up to you where you put your reading list, but the process will be exactly the same. So I'm just going to pop into this week one. OK, and it's basically just the same process that you would follow if you're adding any other content to your course. So you go into build content. And if you scroll down near the bottom, you'll see here reading lists. So you want to give your reading list a name. And then maybe a description. Now you can track the number of views if you want to see how much their engagement there's been with your reading list uh, and then you just need to click submit. OK, so now here you can see your reading list has been created. So what you now need to do is start adding resources. So when you click on the reading list, it's going to take you through to this page, uh, launch LTI link. I'm just going to click on launch and then up in the top left, click for readings. I know that's not very visible. Um, if you click through to that, it's going to take me to the page uh, to allow me to add library resources. Now, just a word of warning, uh, when I was testing this earlier today, it did seem to be taking its time and going quite slowly. Um, just a, a couple of pointers uh, before I start showing you how to add resources. First of all, um, maybe have a think about what you want to put on your reading list. Because it's in Blackboard and it's going to be accessible online, you might want to make sure that the things you put on the reading list are all available electronically, so online articles and ebooks just so that the student is able to go to the reading list, find the selected book, click on it, and it will take them through to the electronic version to be able to read it. Um, you can, of course, put on physical books if you want to, but it just means it's not very accessible to students if they, if they want to access the book immediately. Another point to make is, um, obviously, I'm just going to be doing a very generic search today. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, but you'll probably already have specific texts in mind. You'll know what journal articles you want them to read. You'll know what websites you want them to visit. So this process will probably be a bit more focused when you're doing it. But today I'll just be um, adding in any old thing. So my reading list, of course, I gave the title reading list. It's basically just telling me that there's another list with the same name. Would you like to copy it? So I'm just going to choose the start fresh. Do not copy an existing list. OK. 
So now I'm going to search for library resources. So put in a keyword. And what this is doing is basically pulling through all of the library's electronic resources. So we've got ebooks, we've got articles, we've got videos, lots of different types of sources there. Um, and it also lists the library's physical books as well. If you look at this result number one here, it says retrieve catalog item. Um, this is a physical book. So as I've already mentioned, you can put that on your list, but just bear in mind the student would need to would need to go into the library to be able to access that particular reading. If you look over to the left hand side, you can actually narrow your search down by source type. So I'm going to do that now. Click on the plus button there, and I'm actually just going to look for ebooks. So everything in this list is now available electronically. Now you'll notice that underneath each result, it says add to reading list. So it really is as simple as clicking on that. Add to reading list. And that will automatically add it to your list. Okay, so we've got a few eBooks on there. I'm going to now remove that ebook facet by clicking on the little minus sign. And now I'm going to go back to source type and pick a couple of journal articles. OK, so again, I'm not really being um, very discerning. I'm just clicking on any uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. But as I say, you will probably have specific ones in mind, or you might want to spend a bit more time looking for things that are at the appropriate level. OK, so I've added a couple of journal articles as well. Now you can add as many items as you want to your reading list. If you scroll up to the top of the screen in the left hand corner, you'll see it says see current reading list. So I click on that and that's just going to show me what I've added. OK. Now. The reading list software that we use is called Curriculum Builder. And I know that this is not the most elegant looking of uh, interfaces. I am going to show you in a few moments uh, the student preview, so it will show you how the students will view it. But there are a couple of things you can now do from the screen. So you can reorder the items in your reading list. So you might want to put essential reading at the top and then recommended reading a bit further down. So you can sort of, um, you know, click and drag and move things into a particular order. You can also add notes. So if you have a book and you maybe only want the student to read a particular chapter, you can add in those notes there and click on save. If you want to add websites or, you know, articles that you find on the web to your list you can do that here add web resource okay so just going to copy and paste in url okay and give it a title add to reading list <clears throat> so just add another one there You want to add the, the whole site, that's fine. OK, add to reading list. So you're gradually just building up a list of resources that you want your students to read. Now, you can organize this even more if you want to. So you might want to split this up into different topics. So you can add folders. Here it says add folder. Um, you could give folder a name. And 
and then you'll see that each resource in your list now over on the right hand side gives you that option to move to folder so i'll just do that move this into the stock markets folder <clears throat> okay so you're free to organize this in whichever way you want to so what i'm going to do now is just move back to um the week one materials sorry close that down um and just give you an idea of what it looks like from a student perspective so it is really the same process that they they would follow to access the reading list so launch lti so i need to just um, click on the launch button click for readings up in the left hand corner okay and so this is how the student would see the reading list okay and you can see the notes that you made earlier there please read chapter five got your your folder there um, there's also this site function so if a student wanted to know how to cite the source in the harvard style which is what we use at nescol it does come up but what i would say uh, just to advise a little bit of caution with this um we at nescol do have our own slight variation on the harvard style so i would always get students just to double check that to make sure that it conforms to the way that nescol uses harvard but it is a good starting point and it will um, help the students to be able to sort of quickly reference those resources so that's how to create reading lists in blackboard if you're just getting started with this process and you maybe want a little bit of advice on how to start with reading lists or you maybe don't know what resources you want to add to it do get in touch with the library and we can help you with that so we can maybe have a look if you give us an idea of the different topics we can have a look through our resources and maybe recommend some that students would find useful similarly if you know about specific textbooks that we don't have in the library please get in touch and let us know if it's something that you would like us to buy in and we can investigate that for you so i've just popped my contact details up on the screen there please do feel free to get in touch with any questions you have at all or if you have any general library inquiries you can email library at nescol.ac.uk and of course we have our social media channels as well facebook and twitter and um, we tend to update you know if we have any news about resources um, or library services we will tend to update on our social media channels straight away so please do give us a follow there so thank you very much for listening today and i hope to hear from you soon thank you